Welcome to Tough Conversations with David Wood, where play meets depth. We help teams and high-performing leaders like you to master your tough conversations so you succeed in your career and in your life. When we avoid tough conversations, we stay small. Teams stay disengaged, conflicted, and ultimately end up quitting. When we lean in and master our tough conversations, they become the defining moments that literally shape our careers, our relationships, and our lives. So let's dive in and master your next tough conversation so you can be the leader that you would follow. Let's play. You can study speaking skills and when to move your hand and where to stand on stage and things like that, but you're still gonna be a crap speaker if who you are is a crap person. Welcome to another episode of Tough Conversations with David Wood. This one's a bit different. This recording was not done for a podcast. What happened is Derek Loudermilk from the Art of Adventure podcast, which I highly recommend you check out, interviewed me for an upcoming book that he's writing about leadership. And I wasn't going to share it with you guys because, you know, you hear him typing in the background and I'm speaking in a slightly stilted manner. But as I listened to the recording, I realized I love the information here. We really got into some great stuff about what leadership means. And because I knew it was for a book, I was speaking like every word matters. So let's dive in. I want to share with you, bring you into that interview where Derek Loudermilk quizzed me about leadership. How do we really show up as leaders in this world? Let's dive in. What comes to mind, I don't know how unconventional it is, but I, I'm a big fan of the concept of inside out leadership. And another way of, to put that is to lead others, you need to lead yourself. Yeah. And I like this because I think it's a great way to justify the importance of personal growth. Because a leader can study leadership skills. It's a little bit like speaking. You can study speaking skills and when to move your hand and where to stand on stage and things like that. But you're still going to be a crap speaker if who you are is a crap person. (laughs) Yes. But if you learn inside out leadership um, and speaking is leading, then you'll learn things like how not to hide what's going on for you, how to reveal what's happening, how to tap in with your own natural passion. You learn things like that. You're going to be watchable on stage. And it won't matter where you stand on the stage or if you make one of the classic 10 mistakes that speakers make. And I think this directly translates to leading a team. If you're trying to work from a manual, but you haven't gotten to the point where you can acknowledge yourself and praise yourself for the good things that you've done, how good are you going to be at praising others? And acknowledging their good work. If you can't speak up and say, I need help. When you don't have the resources to do a project, how can you expect the people following you to do it? So the, the, the two broad answers to what you said is, you know, there's a, there's a whole, I've got nine characteristics of inside out leadership. And, and I also think that Mastering tough conversations is another unconventional way to develop leaders. Because every tough conversation that you have is a leadership move. Yeah, I definitely want to get into that. Um, Before we do this concept of like the reading from a manual, like studying and understanding something versus knowing it like at a core level is only available like after you've experienced it. Like there's some things that are only on the other side of actually experiencing something. Interesting. That might be right with the speaking. 
<clears throat> I didn't have an epiphany or anything. I just went to speak after six years of not speaking on stage and something had changed. I, I didn't need the money anymore from speaking. I didn't need to identify as a speaker. So I was there really to help people. And I was so natural and myself on stage. I ended up selling $150,000 worth of product in 15 minutes. And one guy said I was Buddha-like on stage. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm Australian. <laughs> but I got the experience of being myself on stage. And um, speaking was never the same again. So yeah, I could, I could relate to that. But you can, you can do your own personal work. You can go and have tough conversations with people, for example, which is a great way to practice developing yourself. And you can start to have the experiences you're talking about step by step through those conversations and develop yourself as a leader. One conversation at a time. I'm trying to think about how we can tie in tough conversations with this this framework, this sort of like quest, you know, this hero's hero's journey type of like who am I? Let's go find out. Let's go have an adventure and and discover all these things about ourselves. Yeah, that we had that we didn't know or hadn't embraced. Yeah, when when you say that, um, firstly, I'm going to paste into the chat the nine characteristics. Oh, cool! Of authentic leadership. Is this something that you've come up with? Yeah. Is this is this recent recent work that you're also working on? Um, this would be over the last. Six to twelve months. Okay, yeah, for sure. Nine, and this is nine characteristics of inside out. Yeah, you could call it inside out leadership, uh, authentic leadership. Um, hearing you say that before, what I what came to me was the idea that was the idea of vulnerability, and and knowing knowing yourself. I've got a model. I got a model that I've got written down somewhere. Um, what was it? It was. It was so, there were four steps, but the, I know three of them: know yourself, lead yourself, and lead others. I forget what the fourth step was. Eat cookies. Pardon? Eat cookies. Probably ice cream it was in there. Um, so you want to know yourself. And, and this is like, you know, when you're leading, like I, I'm coaching a manager now and she's, she was worried about feedback she's going to get from her staff. They were doing a round of feedback. And she was so worried. So I said, let's lean into it. Tell me, tell me the worst things that you could hear. So this is her learning to know herself. And then I'll say them to you. We'll do a role play and I'll give you some feedback as a, as a mock staff member. And I was pretty easy on her for the first five or ten minutes and she was doing well. She was actually listening. And then I, then I said to her, you know, basically though, when it comes down to it, you're just clueless. And that really triggered her. She, 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 she shut down. So it was great. I gave her easy so she got to like realize oh i can do this and then we got to something that would shut her down so we could look at what happened so she learned a lot about herself and then she went and got the feedback from the staff and it went really well she was a lot more robust now and there's an exercise that uh called fly on the wall which is great for leaders where we get the leaders uh, the leader will go and sit on the outside of a circle of, say, four people and listen to those four people talk about them. And they will gossip. And they'll start saying all the negative shit 
that they can uh, think of about this person. Oh, you know, David's so arrogant. You know, who does he think he is? He hasn't even really done anything in his life, and yet he thinks he's better than everybody. They just really go to town. And I've seen people breaking down in tears and just total messes hearing the things they've been afraid to hear their entire life. But the idea is let's get triggered now in a safe environment with friends versus up on stage or in front of a meeting when your authority is being challenged. Let's find all those soft spots. Which all comes back to know yourself. Find your soft spots. Yeah. We're, we're running around hiding from people. We don't want people to say certain things because we believe them to be true. And it's like this big shove our head in the sand party. And it was a big deal for me years ago when I, I started walking around at a, at a gathering and introducing myself as arrogant. Say, hey, I'm arrogant. How are you doing? That was what, I mean, it was a personal growth workshop, right? So it wasn't like out of context. But that was the stuff I was scared that people would think, and here I am just leaning into it, and now I can own it. I'm super arrogant. I think I'm smarter than almost everybody on the planet. And I think my way is the right way. But once I know that, and I start to own it and lean into it, I'm not worried about someone else saying it. They could say it, and I can agree with them instead of getting, having to defend myself. Sounds very Steve, Steve Jobsian. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I just no, I just came to that realization. You know, that Heidi, Heidi was saying like she's like you just think you're better than everyone else. I was like, no, I know that. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I like this. Like, there's there's many means. Like you could you could stumble upon your soft spots when you are just in the course of your everyday living. You could do exercises that take you there, or you could like if you're pushing your comfort zone, you're more likely to find them quickly. You've been listening to Tough Conversations with David Wood. Now it's action time. Mastering your tough conversations will have a major impact on your team, your company and you as a high-performing executive or entrepreneur. If you're ready, request a discovery session with me at playforreal.life so we can transform your team, your company, and you. And if you've enjoyed this episode, I would love you to help me spread this message of tough conversations in a very simple way. Just leave a public review at playforreal.life forward slash podcast. And you may hear me read it out loud and thank you live on a future podcast. Now, let's play. <laughs>